<laughs> Give me a, a brief snapshot of how the parallel storylines work between Rise of the Empire and the first film. Well, yeah. this film takes place on the same three days as the Battle of Thermopylae. Uh, we just get to see a different perspective. We're not from the Spartan perspective, we're from uh, the free Greek perspective, and we're following um, this leader, Thermistocles, who is a naval commander. Yeah, and the other thing you get to see, I think, that's different in this film is it sort of, it also, it jumps forward and backward a little bit because it also goes and sort of paints the origins of, um, of uh, Xerxes. So you get to see Xerxes' birth and what, what caused him to uh, sort of become the, the character that you saw in the original film. And uh, you get to see him, um, you know, transform before your eyes. So it's a, and that's a mystery too, and it's kind of fun to watch that. And I think it, and, and then you also get to see sort of some elements of the original film kind of woven through to sort of let you see where you are in context of the um, timeline of the original film. So you kind of, you every, every now and then you're just checking in with that sort of the, the you know, the Spartans and their, what they're up to. So it's kind of fun that way too. I love that there's moments where you go, oh, that's the messenger. And like, there's like, there's some, it's not just the characters you expect to see coming right, back. Right, right, right. Or like when uh, Daxos rides up and tells Thermistocles, like, the hot gates have fallen. You're like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's where he went. <laughs> that's I remember where he went. him he leaving. Off the horse. Remember, he rides in. The... Yeah, it's cool. It's a fun way to see the characters that, you know, that connect us to the original film. I thought it'd be cool, like, that, that some, if some fan, you know, once this movie comes out on DVD, they can, some fans could cut the two movies together into a single, like, you could cut them into a single film. Like, and you know. someone probably will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, were there some interesting conversations that you had with Rodrigo and Lena uh, coming back, the things that they really wanted to do with the roles that they didn't get a chance to the first time or that they were looking forward well, to this time? <laughs> I think Lena came back because we told her she would get to fight in this one because she's such a strong, female character in the original movie and she really is the emotional core of that film and she also grounds us emotionally in this film but the fact that she gets to put a sword in her hand and she gets to fight with the guys I think that was very appealing to her. Yeah that was non-negotiable I think. <laughs> <laughs> Something I know uh, we've talked about this before that's important in these visual effects films for, for you as filmmakers is to say if the actor can touch it it, it pretty much needs to really be there. And I'm, I was really struck reading the press release on this, like, the, you know, I knew it, but I was reminded of it. The level of talent in Alexandra, in Patrick, in the people that came onto this film and were responsible for those tangible things, um, how does that collaboration work? How much say do you guys have in what's real, what's not real, and, um, I think that because the sort of, you know, the rules are, that we've established are not just us, but you know, that have sort of been established and sort of work, they understood that. And Patrick really understands it in an incredible way. He, you know, he's working with us now on the Superman Batman movie and he's really, uh, we've had a great experience with him and he's, he's awesome. And I think the sets that he's built and these ships and uh, the, uh, and, you know, Persian um, capital and Athens, they all look um, pretty pretty amazing. And I think that, you know, he's done a really amazing job letting the scale exist. Because that's where you get into trouble with a movie like this. You know, even though it seems like, oh, everything's limitless, you can make the scale infinite. But you t what happens is you tend to, because you're on a green screen, I think it's human nature to go like, no, it's this is sort of an intimate thing. And then you end up, even as you develop it, even though if, for instance, you could see to the horizon, you end up putting a mountain there or a thing there, or, you start. You close the space off because that's how you feel comfortable with it. That's how you shot it, and I think that that, I think, Patrick was very, um, you know, a key a key force behind like expanding the, the scale. 